So one of the things that Active Directory gives us for larger networks, or not even necessarily larger networks, but multi-site networks, is the ability to reflect the physical structure of our nature or of our network in Active Directory. So we can create different sites and different subnets. And then Active Directory will use that information to direct users or clients to the nearest resources. And then we can also manage replication across different sites when we're dealing with slower network links. So let's take a look at how this works. We're going to go to Tools and Active Directory Sites and Services. Now we're going to have one site predefined. There we go. Uh, we're going to have one site predefined, and that is our default first site name, which nobody ever said Microsoft was creative in their naming structure. So if I expand my default first site name, I'm going to find servers, and I have a server that's in that site. If I look at subnets, I actually don't have anything there by default. In my inner site transports, I've got two different types of inner site transports, IP and SMTP. And in IP, I have a default IP site link. So all of these things are created for me by default. Now, if I don't want this default first site name and I want something that's going to be more useful, I can right click and rename it. So I'm going to rename this to Yakima, let's say. And now I have a site called Yakima with a server in it. Now, I still don't have any defined subnets. So I can define a subnet. Let me find my IP address that I'm using, just so you can see it here. I'm 172.16.1.10 and slash 24, in case you're curious. So I'm going to create a subnet. I'm going to right-click on subnets and go to new subnet. And I'm going to create one, 172.16. Let me turn on number lock, 172.16. Dot, uh, I think it was dot zero, wasn't it? Let me pull this back up. Nope, one. Dot one dot zero. So that's my network ID. And then I'm going to do my prefix in CIDR notation, so slash 24. So this gives me a prefix for Active Directory Domain Services. And then I associate it with a site. And I want to put that in the Yakima site. And so I'm going to click OK. Now that gives me my subnet. So any devices in Active Directory that have something with an IP address in this range, they knows they're going to be in the Yakima site. And when I look at my subnets, let me right click on my subnet and go to properties, I can see that it's in Yakima. Interestingly enough, by the way, I can also set the location, protect from accidental deletion. The location is primarily just informational items. But by associating it with the Yakima site, I can also set a description here if I want, then I know that anything in that subnet will be in the Yakima site. Now I can actually create multiple subnets in the same site. So let me do this. I'm going to do a new subnet and I'm going to do 172.16.2.0 slash 24. And I'm going to put it in my Yakima site as well. So now anything in those two networks we're going to know are in Yakima. And so we're going to try to direct clients to servers in Yakima. Now, if I want to create another site, I'm going to do this. Let me right click and I'm going to do a, let me not right click on Yakima. Let me right click on sites, new site. And I'm going to create one for Prosser. And I'm going to go ahead and use the default IP site link. We're going to play with that here in a minute. And let that creates Prosser, and then I'm going to go ahead and create another one. Let's do a new site in Sunnyside. There we go, and we'll do the default IP site link for that. Now, I have no servers in those sites at the moment. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and add subnets to those sites as well so that Active Directory will recognize IP, this IP address range belongs to this site. So I'm going to right-click on subnet, and I'm going to create a new subnet. And it's going to be 192, not 192. Let's keep with the same pattern, 172.16.3.0 slash 24. And let's associate that with Prosser. And then let's do a new subnet for 172.16.4.0 slash 24. And I'll put that one in Sunnyside. Okay, there we go. We now have sites and services. Now, the other thing that we're going to 
that's going to play into this is going to be Active Directory replication. Now, on-prem within the same site, servers are automatically going to synchronize with each other in Active Directory on a fairly regular basis. But if we're doing a wide area syncing, that sometimes goes over slower links. And so we might want to control that a little bit more often. We might not want to let that happen as frequently so that it doesn't tie up as much of our wide area network bandwidth. We, we might also want to schedule when it happens. So the way we do that is by looking at our uh, inner site transports. And so I've got the default IP site link. And right now, all three of these are in this site link. So if I was mapping this to like an actual physical connection, um, I would do this if I had, you know, a high-speed link from Yakima to Prosser and from Yakima to Sunnyside. Okay, that's cool. Now, the cost, of Active Directory is going to choose the lowest cost link that it can. So if I create a backup link on a lower-speed connection, I can set the cost higher, and then Active Directory won't try to use that link unless the primary one goes down. We can also set our replication schedule. So it's replicating every 180 minutes. Here we can change our schedule. So it's right now set to do this all the time. Okay, if I let's say I had another link between Sunnyside and Prosser that was a little bit slower speed of a link. And this is going to be a physical link, right? So I've got a wide area network connection from Yakima to Prosser and then from Yakima to Sunnyside. And so they all show up as sites in this link. Now, if I create a wide area network connection between Prosser and Sunnyside that runs a little bit slower, okay, I might want to change the way that replicates. So to do that, I would create a new site link. And I'm going to call this, for the fun of it, slow speed link. And then I'm going to add Prosser and Sunnyside into that link. So now those two are sharing that link. And when I hit OK and create it, it goes ahead and creates it as, with the same standard options. But I can come in here and I can change it. And I can say I'm going to bump this cost up to 200 so it won't use it as much. I'm going to have it replicate. Let's do this is every three hours. Let's do every four hours, so 240 minutes. And then I can modify the schedule too, right? So I can say I don't want you to use this between 8 and 5 Monday through Friday. So I'm going to select that range and click Replication Not Available. So all day Saturday, all day Sunday, uh, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the days or all the time except 8 to 5, we could use this. But it's not going to try to replicate during those times so that my bandwidth is set aside and dedicated to the actual operations of my network. Okay, so we've created sites, we've created subnets, and we've associated them with sites, and then we've also created inner site uh, transports that will control how we do Active Directory replication between servers in different sites.